Mm. Crazy. Uh, to talk about the early part of your career, um, you have to mention this name, Jazzy J. Um, talk about linking up with him and, and, and what it, he meant to you in terms of helping you out, you know, with the beginnings of hip hop in, in your own production. Right. Well, first of all, um, Jazzy J was definitely the man in the Bronx back then. He was the DJ of Soul Sonic Force. Um, they had that huge, huge record planning rock. So that took them around the world a few times. And um, shortly after that, Jazzy J did the Beat Street soundtrack to that movie Beat Street. Right, classic. Um, he also helped found Def Jam Records. He produced the first single of Def Jam called It's Yours by T. La Rock. T. La Rock. Yes, sir. That's right. Oh, okay. He also did you know, Cool J's first single, I Need a Beat. So he helped mm. craft that whole mm. Def Jam sound. Right. After that, after that, he started his own label in the Bronx, Strong City Records. Um, he had artists like Busy B, Suicide. He had Masters of Ceremony. He had a song called Sexy. So right. you know, he, he had his hands, he had his hands in all kind of shit. And you know, he was he, he was also a, a collector of beats. And that's how that's how me and him clicked up. You know, I I, I had like I had like a a good knowledge of records for a young age, and that's probably right. what pulled me into Jay, and have and you know wind up him taking me taking me under his wing, and, and teaching me how to produce things of that nature. Crazy. At that, you, um, at that age, you, where, you, where where did he used to take you to get um like records for you to um, sample and mess with? He ain't really take me nowhere. Like by the time I met Jay, um, I met Jay like. I would say like 1986, I met Jazzy J. But the ultimate force, our song didn't come out to, to like 88. So right. in that two year period, I'm, I'm just up under him and I'm watching and I'm learning. But right. ultimately he signed, he signed us to his label, Strong City Records. And um, I was in a group called The Ultimate Force and that single was I'm Not Playing. Right, you and Master right. Rob, that's right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. How come, you know, I, I know you also, Ultimate Force also had Charlie Rock, LMD, Show and, show and Tell. Uh, wh how, why did it end up just being a two-man group as opposed to the original, like, five? Uh, Charlie Rock and Show and Tell, they went off to the military. LMD, he hooked up, he hooked up with a female out in California, so it was like me and Rob were the only ones left at that point. Mm. And I know you had some. Uh, I know you had some uh, label politics. You know, I know I'm not playing was pretty big, and then you know there were politics involved. The album never came out in 1990. How happy were you when Traffic finally re-released it in 2007? Yeah, you know, I, I I felt good that you know the music was you know it could finally be heard. You know what I mean? And appreciated uh -huh. for what it was. You just had to listen to it. You know, it was kind of hard to listen to it in 2007. When at that point, you know, it's like 15 years old, but I'm still glad it's sort of light of day. Indeed. Um, indeed. 